your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians in chapter number 2. Once you find your place in 2 Corinthians 2, I invite you to stand in honor of reading God's Word. 2 Corinthians in chapter number 2. We're going to begin in verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5. Here uh, Paul continues his letter to the church of Corinth under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. He says in verse 5, But if any have caused grief, he hath not grieved me, but in part that I may not overcharge you all. Sufficient to such a man is this, Punishment, which was infected, inflicted of many, so that contrawise ye ought rather to forgive him and comfort him, lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with overmuch sorrow. Wherefore, I beseech you that ye would confirm your love toward him, for to this end also did I write that I might know the proof of you, whether ye be obedient in all things. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgive anything to whom I forgive, yet for your sakes forgive I it in the person of Christ, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Furthermore, when I come to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was opened unto me of the Lord, I had no rest in my spirit because I found not Titus my brother, but taking my leave of them, I went from thence into Macedonia. Father, as we are to the preaching and teaching part of the service, Father, once again I ask that you would empty me of myself, Father, that you would cleanse me of my sin and that you would fill me with thine Holy Ghost that I may preach thus saith the word of the Lord. Father, help us this morning as we go over this sensitive topic, Lord, that we have so much trouble with. Lord, I pray that you would help us. We would learn from what you have here in your word that Paul has written so long ago, Lord, that we can apply it to our lives. We ask you to do all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. Ask God to bless the reading of His Word. I want to speak to you this morning on the subject of forgiveness. We've talked about here the first chapter that Paul has opened up more about himself to the church at Corinth. Because there was a certain people or even a person in the church at Corinth that was causing trouble. Now Paul had never claimed to be a perfect man, has he? In quite, he has claimed to be the chief of sinners. You know, uh, and so Paul, he, we know Paul was not perfect and not that he claimed himself to be the chief of sinners, but... There were still some folks there in Corinth that were troubling the church and Paul because they were causing division. Well, it seems to be in chapter 2 that the one who was causing the trouble had already been uh, partaken of church discipline because we see here in what Paul's writing here is he's writing to the church about forgiveness forgiveness and specifically to this one person and so I want to speak to you this morning on the subject of forgiveness because Paul he start he, he instructs Corinth to forgive look at if we look at verses 5 through 8 we see Paul uh, instructing them about how that they need to forgive this person 
It says, But if any have caused grief, he hath not grieved me, but in part that I may not overcharge you all. He, look at this. He goes, we know he's gone under some church discipline because look at verse five, or verse 6. He says, Sufficient to such a man is this punishment which was inflicted of many. He said, listen, the, the, the punishment that this man has, uh, that has come about upon this man that he has is because of the church discipline. He goes, it's sufficient. You, 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 did you hear that? He says, what has happened? He, he, he brought it before the church, and the, dis, the discipline is sufficient for this man. You know, it seems uh, to me in my own life and I, in others that when we have wronged someone else, that even though we have apologized for what we have done, and maybe they have in words said, don't worry about it, it wasn't sufficient for them. Our apology wasn't sufficient, was it? It just seems like, and you, you get that feeling. You walk away from maybe that apology, and you're like, well, he really, they, they really didn't forgive me. They, they just wanted to get away from me. And so and Paul is telling here this, the church at Corinth, listen, the punishment that this man has received because of what he has done, it is sufficient. So he's, try, he's instructing the church at Corinth, you need to forgive him because may, it's possible that there were still some in the church that were so uh, hurt by what this guy had done to their pastor Paul that they have yet to forgive him. And listen... Uh, we, we are human, we have, we have that human nature, that sin nature, don't we? And we could be just like those people that maybe in the past, a preacher, a pastor, a Sunday school teacher, or someone in the church has hurt us, or hurt someone we know in the church, and maybe they have made amends for it, maybe it was public, and, uh, and they went, stood before the church and apologized to the church for what they had done. But yet there's still some people that could say, he's not sincere. We, we've already cast judgment on him. Or she's not sincere. And so Paul said, listen, the punishment is sufficient, church. You need to forgive this person. And so he, he, he's trying to instruct them on forgiveness. Listen, the, the man at the center of this controversy... Uh, with Paul, uh, that he went through that that uh, discipline. And so forgiveness, listen, forgiveness not only heals the person who admitted the guilt, but forgiveness also heals the one who gives the forgiveness. That, that, that it heals both relationships. And so, listen, both the, the, the relationship between this man and this church was still hindered. And we need to understand that, listen, we need to forgive others because if we don't, there's a root that will embed into our soul, into our heart, called bitterness. Every single one of us knows someone who never got over something that someone else has done to them, and you can see the bitterness. Forgiveness heals bitterness and envy. It does. If we do not forgive, Paul tells us in verse 7 that we will be caught up with much sorrow. Look at verse 7. As he, as he says there, he goes, so, shall, so that countrywise ye ought rather to forgive him and comfort him less. Look at this. Perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with over much sorrow. He says, listen, if you don't forgive this person in the church, they are going to be overwhelmed with sorrow. And you know what What else? That, that, that right there, if the church as a whole and each individual in the church does not forgive this person, that right there in itself could hinder this person from ever going to church again. And if you, the, those in the church doesn't, don't forgive this person, they could, take it so, uh, they could be so offended that they leave the church because of what someone else has done. Listen, 
Listen, I can't stress enough how much we as believers, it's hard. I know it's hard. But we, if, if any people on this earth ought to be able to, is we ought to be able to forgive. Why? Because we are forgiven. We are forgiven of so much, are we not? And so Paul says, listen, you, he goes, he's encouraging them, you ought to forgive this person, because if you don't, this person in the church, he goes, church, if this person is not forgiven, they can be overtaken with a lot of sorrow. How many of you have ever had that much sorrow? Because you know that you were never forgiven. Listen, sorrow turns into all kinds of all kinds of things. And so, listen, we ought to forgive because we have been forgiven. Look, Paul tells the church in Ephesus, and be ye what? Kind one to another, right? What else? Tender hearted? And the very next word he uses is forgiving one another. Why? As God for Christ's sake hath what? Forgiven up you. So as believers, as Paul says to the church at Ephesus, and what he's telling here to the church at Corinth, listen, you ought to forgive. Why? God for Christ's sake, he forgave you of your transgression because, listen, let's, let, let's, let's just lay it out. What we did to Jesus, what we have done to God in our disobedience, surpasses, far surpasses anything that we have probably have done to one another. Thank you, Brother Priest. We nailed him to a cross, did we not? Let me ask you, has your friend who ever said, husband or wife or friend ever nailed you to a cross? Surely we could forgive someone for what they have said or what they have done. Preacher, you have no idea what they have done to me. No, I don't, but I know what I did to Jesus and he forgave me. What I did to him outweighs more than anything anyone else could do to me. And he forgave me, so I need to forgive them. What did Jesus also, when the disciples asked him to teach them how to pray, what did he say? Forgive us our debts as we forgive what? Our debt. Listen, if you think, if you think well, that's just Paul. Jesus said you need to forgive others too. He said that he said that we go to Matthew and, we, and look where he said that. But he said as he's teaching the, the disciples to pray, uh, he says you need to ask your father for your for, for forgiveness, and you need to forgive others. There's also we listen, folks. What Paul is telling the church here is uh, in verse eight is we are to forgive with no strings attached look at verse number eight wherefore i beseech you that ye would confirm your love toward him how do you forgive someone without holding them uh, any with uh, how do you forgive them without with no strings attached well we are to forgive them by confirming our love toward that person you mean I, 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 I still got to love that person? Not only do you have to love that person, you need to go to that person and confirm your love for that person. Yeah, that, that, that's what we are supposed to do. This is what Paul said. Listen, church, uh, uh, the church there at Corinth, listen, you need to forgive that person because the punishment he received, it was sufficient. Not only do you need to forgive him because of the punishment, it was sufficient, but you need to go to that person and confirm your love. And you know what that tells me, Miss Vicky? That I need to go and tell that person, I love you. No, only do I need to tell that person I love them, but how do you show somebody that, how does someone know that you love them? It's not by words, but by what? Action. That's what it means to confirm your love. You need to show them that you still love them. 
then they won't be overwhelmed with sorrow because they'll know they have been forgiven. So Paul instructs Corinth to forgive, tells them they need to forgive. So now, number two, Paul instructs Corinth how to forgive. Look at verse 10. He says, listen, to whomever ye forgive anything, I forgive also. He goes, but look, for if I forgive anything to whom I forgive it for your sakes, forgive I it in the person of Christ. We are, how are we to forgive? We are to forgive others in Christ's strength. Because let's be honest. We have that flesh, and what does that flesh want to do? I'm not forgiving him. He's a pastor. He smokes no better. I'm not, listen, he, listen, that Sunday school teacher, that brother Roy, he, Hiles Anderson, he, he should know better than to say that or do that. Well, listen, I'm not for, listen, they've been in church for 35 years, and they should know. We got that flesh, don't we? You can't forgive in the flesh. Paul says, no, no, no. He goes, how are you supposed to forgive this person, church? In Christ's strength. In him. I remember him saying something to a church. I can do all things. In Christ, who what? Strengtheneth me. Listen, how are we to forgive? We are to forgive in Christ. That means we need to go to him and get right with him because we haven't forgiven this person, forgave this person. Get right with him, filled, get filled with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, and go and forgive that person and confirm that forgiveness with love. And so, listen, let me help you out with one little tidbit. It is ungodly not to forgive. Listen, it is not in your nature or my nature as a human, as sinful, to, be, to forgive. But it's God's nature to forgive. Right? So, if we don't forgive someone, you are ungodly. Think about that for a minute. If we neglect to forgive someone, that means we are being ungodly. It is in God's nature to forgive and not ours. So, listen, we cannot neglect to forgive. Because if we neglect to forgive, what does Paul say in verse 11? Lest Satan should get an advantage over what? Us. If you and I neglect to forgive someone and confirm our love to that person, then Satan has an advantage over you. How many of you want, let me see a show of hands, who wants, who wants Satan to have an advantage over you? Not a single person should be raising their hand at all, right? Nobody wants Satan to have an advantage. So what do we need to do? Well, when there is something that has happened, we, are t we need to forgive that person. How many of you ever heard of Corey Ten Boom? She was uh, in a concentration camp, wasn't she? Did you know Corey Ten Boom was taken into a locker room, stripped naked, forced to shower in front of soldiers, German soldiers? In her auto, in her uh, in her testimony, she said that was the most hurtful and shameful thing she had ever been in, been through. And years later, after she had gotten out and she was traveling and she was speaking all across the United States, she was speaking at this one church about forgiveness. 
And at the end of the service, at the end of she got through speaking, she was out there like most preachers do to shake hands. And this gentleman walked up to her and put his hand out and said, Isn't the grace of God wonderful? And as soon as she heard that and saw that man, instantly she was taken back into her memory of when she was forced to shower in front of those soldiers. Why? Because the man that was reaching his hand out to this woman was the ringleader of those soldiers. If you read what she said, she, she said she didn't want to. But instantly she prayed. And she felt the peace of God. And what did she do? Stuck her hand out. If Corey Team Boone can go through what she went through, she also said that she forgave that man, told him that he, she forgave him. Surely some little word what so-and-so said about me would get past that. Forgiveness is so powerful. It is so healing. Not for just for you to offer the forgiveness, but for the others, that other person that is asking for it. I thought about that with Tori uh, Corey Team. I'm like, mercy. She couldn't do that on her own. Because she said she w didn't want to. But in Christ, she did. And in Christ, every single believer can forgive anyone for what anyone has done to them. So Paul said, listen, you need to forgive this person. Because Satan will have an advantage. When we refuse to forgive, Satan gains an advantage over us. Not only when you refuse, we, not just you, but when we refuse to give or to forgive someone, every single person around us that has a relationship with us, suffers from that bitterness that has set in. I mean, I'll, I'll, let me tell you that again, in case you missed it. If you and I neglect to forgive any, someone, then every other person that we have a, a relationship with, friends, family, husband, wife, every single one of them suffers from the bitterness that has set into your life. So Paul is insisting that the church forgive this man. And he also teaches them how to forgive this man. Folks, some of us, there are some folks in here that have been through a lot of things. And I'm not saying forgiveness is going to, you, you, you to forgive that person comes quick. But I will say this the closer you get with, to Jesus, the easier the forgiving of others gets. Why? Because you get so close to Him, you're. You start to look like him. You start to, you, what I mean by look, you start acting like him. And that's the goal, is it not? That is what we are to be, uh, to do as believers. To be like Christ. That's what Christian means. Little Christ. And folks, if we can't forgive someone else, for what they have done for us. How can we tell others about Jesus' forgiveness? How? You know what we call that? 
hypocritical, hypocrite. Oh, Jesus will forgive. Doesn't matter what you've done, Jesus will forgive you. Well, what have you have you forgiven that person for what they have done? Some folks in here need the healing of forgiveness. Maybe you've done something to someone else and you need to be forgiven and you need that healing. What did Jesus tell us to do when we've offended someone? We are to what? Go to that person. One-on-one. -on -one. That's the first step, is it not? So if you've done something to someone else, you need to go to that person. And let me help you out, folks. If someone comes to you and trying to reconcile this relationship, you need to receive that person. But the only way you'll receive that person is in Jesus Christ, in his strength. It's the only way you'll be able to receive them and forgive them. Because the Garth Road Baptist Church will suffer the entire church will suffer from the from bitterness of one person. We'll never be the church that God intends us to be if we are not Christ-like. Forgive others. Why? Because God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Father, as we conclude this morning, Lord, I know forgiveness and can be a hard pill to swallow forgiving others. Lord, with pride and maybe justification, the, the, you're, we may think we're justified in what had happened, but Lord, or... But we know bitterness, Lord, is a root that will destroy a life. Lord, it will choke the life out of that person. And Lord, in that root will affect every single person around them. So Father, I pray for those that are in here this morning or those that are watch, watching live stream if it's up or, or listening to this after, Lord, that Lord, if there's someone that has yet to forgive someone for something that they have done, Lord, I pray that they would take this message this morning that what Paul is writing to the church at Corinth that we've discussed, or they'd apply it and they would forgive that person for whatever has been done. And Lord, they can only do it through you. And so, pray, Father, I pray for that person that they would seek you and seek your help in forgiving that person. Lord, there's probably, and there's possible someone in here, Lord, watching live stream or listening, Lord, that they don't know what forgiveness is. Lord, for they are still in their sin. They have not received the forgiveness of their sins through Jesus Christ, through, Jesus Christ, through the death of the cross. Father, and I pray for those folks that may not know what that is. Lord, they're, they're not sure if, they were to die today, heaven would be their home. Lord, I pray for that person and ask that you would help that person to reach out to us. If they're in here in this room this morning, Lord, that they would come forward during the invitation and they would let us know so we could show them from your word. Lord, if they're not, if they're watching or listening, Lord, that they would reach out to us, email us, message us, or so we could show them from your word how that they can know they can have eternal life and heaven would be their home when they die. Father, I pray that you have spoken to your people this morning through the preaching of your word. Now, may your people respond. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Let's stand.